Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 78 of the RTS Tutorial Series. In this video, we will make our units flee if the status check says they're afraid. This is part one of a two-part series on what we're going to do when our behavior tree indicates the unit is afraid. In the next video, we'll have the unit determine if there's a building nearby, and if there is, the unit will flee to that building instead. If there is not a building, they'll revert back to what we've done in this lesson. That said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Welcome back to the editor, everybody. And in this video, we're gonna take care of our behavior tree for when our unit's afraid. And this will be a two-part video series. Now in this first part, what we're gonna have our units do is when they're afraid, they are going to flee randomly. Now, due to where our units are currently set, we're gonna have an error at the end of this video. And that's fully expected. It's actually not gonna cause any problems with the game or testing or anything like that. We will address that error in the next video. And that's why this is going to be a two-part series, is this first one will take care of making our units flee. In our second video, we're going to have our units locate if a building, any building, is nearby. And then instead of just fleeing randomly, they're going to run to that building for safety. And the error that we're going to get is going to relate to the fact they're running near buildings and actually entering that collision area we use for entering buildings and not entering the building. So all of that said, let's get started. And the first thing I want to do is I want to pop open my behavior tree here. And we're going to do just a tiny bit of housekeeping in that we are going to move everything off to the right a bit. Because I've decided, actually first we're going to move this to the right to get that closer. I've decided that it makes more sense to actually have our fear come before everything else minus this needs billeting. So I'm just going to keep moving this over a tiny bit. All right, I am now going to create a new sequence in the middle here. And this sequence is going to look like the other sequences. We're just going to name this sequence our fear sequence. And we're going to have a blackboard decorator, just like we have with the others, except for it's going to be slightly different. So let's get a blackboard decorator. And what we want to know is we want to know if our unit, sorry, I'm clicking the wrong thing. There it is, is busy. We don't want to know if it's busy. We want to know its status. And we want its status to be equal to is afraid. And I'm just going to name this one is afraid. We want this to be on value change. And we want to change this one to, we don't want it to be self. We don't want it to abort if it changes only on itself. We don't want it to abort just lower priority. We want to change if anything below is active and suddenly they become afraid or suddenly they become afraid and nothing else is active. So we want both here. So again, that should be is equal to is afraid status and both on our observer aborts. All right, next we are gonna have a selector. And we're gonna have a service on this selector in the next video. But in this video, what we're gonna do for now is we are just going to add in a decorator loop and we are going to set this to loop infinitely so we don't want this number three here we want to click infinite and we're going to make sure that the service will go over and over again depending on what's going on so we're going to have two branches coming off of this and as i mentioned we're going to have a select and this selector is going to find out is there a building nearby and that's the thing we'll take care of in the next video if there is not the first selector, or first sequence we're gonna have, is going to be what we'll do today, flee to a random location. Our second one will be move to that building. So let's take care of that first one. So we're gonna put a sequence in. 
And on this sequence, what we need to do is we need to get a random location and then move to that location. So fortunately, we already have part of that taken care of, which means if I forget to do this in this video, make sure you do this based on what I'm saying now, go back at the end of the video and make sure that our move to residence and our move to residence both have the correct blackboard selector. So we're gonna add something to this move to location. So we don't need to create a new task for this part, but we do need to hit create a task to locate the random location. So I'm just gonna to go to tasks. I'm gonna create a new blueprint task here. I'm gonna pin that up there. And let's go back to our main window and let's just quickly rename this as our BTT get random location. And I'm gonna move this get random location into my tasks folder. And I'm gonna go back into here. And cause I like finding that those two dark lines at zero, zero point. I'm just gonna go there to zoom in a bit. And I'm gonna get my event receive execute AI. There we go. And off my controlled pawn, I'm going to get location. Now I want to get the actor's location. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off this return value and I want to get random point. And then we'll have these two get random point navigatable radius and then get random reachable. I'm just gonna take the random point one. You can try both, see what the effect is, play around with them, experiment. All right, there we go. It's a little too zoomed in, I think. Eh, go back a little bit, there. So we can see everything clearly now. Sorry for kind of laughing there. Um, all right, so next, I'm gonna pull off this radius and I'm going to promote to variable and this will be my max radius. Now, I want to make this something that I can edit in the Blackboard or the behavior tree. So let's just set that up. And I'm going to set this to a default value of 10, actually 20,000. There we go. And next, I am going to create a new variable. And this will be my target location. And this will be a Blackboard key selector. So I'm just going to toss this into a blackboard selector category. Again, I want to be able to edit this in the blackboard or behavior tree. And I want to get it. I want to set blackboard value at value as vector. And the random location we're gonna get is going to be our value here. And then I want to just plug this into the execute, receive execute there. And the next thing we need to do is tell the behavior tree this is successful. Because remember, we're using a sequence. And as you can read there, a sequence fails when a child fails. So children are the things that are coming off the sequence. Or anything in a behavior tree is a child of the thing above it. So we need this to return successful. So we need to do a finish, execute. And we need to say, yep, this worked. Go on to the next bit. All right, now let's go back to our behavior tree. Let's set that up. And that's just going to be our get random location. And we are going to rename this real quick as get location. We are gonna do the target location as target location. Let's make sure we set it to the right thing. Let's go back to our blackboard. And our target location indeed is a vector, which is what we wanted. Next, we need to do a move to location. So all I'm going to do is pop open this move to residence we have here, which remember is our BTT move to location. And I am going to move this final bit down somewhat because I just need a little bit of room. I'm actually going to need a lot of room as the series goes on for what we're going to do on this middle bit. So this middle bit, we're also going to move down. And we are going to change some things in here to get this to work correctly. In fact, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to break this is valid. And I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to just grab all of it. That was the wrong thing to grab. Move that out of the way for a moment. 
We aren't going to delete it. We are just moving it so I have room to play with. We're going to create a new variable, and this will be location type. And this will be a enum, and it's going to be our location. Sorry, our building names enum. So building names, there we go. And then we're just going to get it. We are going to switch. Now I might say, or I might want to point out, or it might be worth noting that I might change this to our other building related types enum. I just haven't decided yet. We will decide on next Friday's video, which one it will be, or sorry, this Friday's video. All right, so based on our location type, we're gonna do something different here. Now, the reason why I've said at the end of the video, make sure to go back to make the blackboards correct, is we need to make this something we can edit in the blackboard. And that means now that every time we call this, we have to set location type. So let's plug in the part that works correctly right now. And actually, before I do that, I want more room. So I'm just going to move this further down. There we go. So let's grab what we moved off earlier. Let's bring this down here. And this was related to our residence, which is our barracks. So I'm just going to plug that into there. I'm going to put a reroute in. Now, during some of the other videos, actually, I'm, I'm now doubting why I said a second ago about changing this because we're gonna need to be able to go to the silo or factory depending on our resource units and things like that. So we're gonna leave that probably with this enum. So now when we're hungry or fatigued, we need to make sure it goes to barracks and then everything that we did in the previous videos will work correctly. Here comes the very easy bit. Let's take a look at the logic here. All we're doing is passing in a unit, uh, all we're doing is passing in our target location from our blackboard. And if we look at our random location, we've set that here. And that's something we might want to do, and we'll consider this in probably next week's videos, is that when we finish this execute, we might want to clear that target location. But that's something we'll consider later on. So this bit is really easy. How do we get them to move to a random location that isn't a building? Well, we've set the location, all we need to do at this point is tell them to move there. There's no checks. There is very little chance that a random location on the map is gonna get destroyed. So we don't need to make sure it's valid. We can literally just move there. So let's compile that. Let's go back to our graph here and I'm gonna grab off the sequence and I'm gonna do move to location. I'm gonna rename this as random location or move to random actually, move to random. I'm gonna move this over so it's easier to read. And like I said, we need to set these things. So residence, doesn't really matter because we're not moving to residence, but we'll set it to residence anyway. Target location will be target location and location type here at the top will be blank. Now, let's go to this one. Location type will be resident, actually barracks, sorry, not residence. And location type here will also be barracks. So that takes us through what we need to do for this video. Let's save everything and let's test this out. Now, before I actually test it, I want to make sure that my units still have a high level of fear already uh, set up to go so that when we do this, they should very quickly become afraid. Yep, 0.8. All right. Let's hit play. There we go. One unit is already afraid and on the move. Where is it? There it is. We can see it running away. It's picked a very large number. It's running in a straight line. So I'm going to show you what you... Wow, that's a very long straight line. So I'm not entirely sure how I feel about how long they're running for. So let's play around with that number a tiny bit. And we can do, instead of changing our number in here, we can go here where this says two. 200,000, and let's change it to 1,000. 200,000, that's 20,000. Let's change it to 1,000 now, and let's hit play. And we have same units afraid again. You can see it's now picking, so is our infantry unit. 
and they're kind of zigzagging, which is a little bit more realistic to a unit being just randomly afraid and trying to flee anywhere. Now, when I hit stop, because both these units have gone near the barracks and this one near the, um, uh, oh, sorry, barracks and the training post, we're actually going to have an error. And there it is. That's the error I was talking about. This error, don't worry about it. What's happening is our units are colliding with the collision points around each of these buildings related to, again, entering that building. And so it's going, hey, something should be happening, but I have no data for that. I expected this. We will be addressing that in later in the next video. Now, to test, the reason why we didn't do it in this video was we needed to test the units will randomly flee. Because the way we are going to do flee to a building is going to be based on how close these buildings are to them. If a building's within a certain range, they will run to that building. If it is not, so that's what we're going to do up here with that selector. If it is not, then they are going to do what we did today. But because of where we have our units already, they're all too close to these buildings, they're going to run directly to it. So that was just to make sure this concept worked. As I said in the next video, what we're going to do is make sure the rest of it works. Also, just because I know how much room this stuff is going to take up, I want to move this over just a bit more. There we go. So in the next video, we'll do the service that will go here, and the decorators for this selector, and the selector, or the sequence, sorry, for the two sequences we'll have coming off of this selector. So the service will say, find a building nearby. There is no building. There is a building. This will be, there is no building. Flee random location. Our next sequence, which I'll just put in now, will say, hey, building, go there. All right. That said, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. And make sure to subscribe and select that notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. As always, if you want to help support this channel further, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. And also, as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. And I hope you have a wonderful day.